Well, in this video, we're going to talk about CC in these heads. As we discussed earlier, these heads have been decked, and uh, that took just a small amount of small amount of uh, metal off, which could potentially have affected our combustion chamber size. These particular Glock stock, uh, these particular heads, GT40Ps, are 59 CCs. Um, does it really matter? I mean. Yeah, it matters, but they've not been moved from stock much. But I want to quantify their volume uh, because I'm calculating uh, both uh, static and dynamic compression ratio uh, with this new layout. So I want to know what that volume is in order to make that work. So how do you go about that? Um, well, let me let me show you. We're going to start. We uh, we actually CC this one. You'll notice there's a spark plug in there, and that's there to fill that gap. That hole. Uh, if we CC this one, I'll tell you the results in a minute. Probably the same as this one. Um, but uh, so this one also has a spark plug in it. And what we want to do first is, uh, you can use Vaseline. You can use, in this case, I'm using some grease. Uh, you want something relatively innocuous to your block, to your head, not going to hurt you. And uh, so you just we're going to go around it with grease. This is going to act as a sealant for the plate that we're going to use to measure our measure our uh, CC dimension here on the combustion chamber. Um, some people will tell you to also grease around the valves uh, in case the valves leak. Um, well, the valves leak, I'm going to be unhappy. Uh, they're not supposed to leak. They've been reseeded, brand new, uh, and as a matter of fact, it turned out I didn't grease around the valves um, on this one, and it did not leak. So I was happy with that. I'm not saying you won't have some leakage even on a rebuilt head, but I'm pretty hopeful that we don't. So we've got some grease around it now. I've cut a piece of plexiglass plate um, that fits over this. I think mine's about five inches square. It doesn't matter as long as it covers it in its entirety. Also, I'm clearing any grease out that uh, got too close to the edge here. I don't want it to affect my CC readings. Um, so here's our plate wipe it off. Here's our plate. Uh, like I said, it's just plexiglass, but you'll note, in just a second, you'll note that there's a hole in it. It's a hole here at the top, and uh, that hole is going to go toward the top of our chamber. You'll notice I've got the heads at a slight angle. I'm going to go ahead and compress it on here, and you can generally see if you have a good seal uh, or not. By the way, the grease smears here so now we basically have a sealed combustion chamber a little bit of grease acting as a sealant we've got the hole at the top of the combustion chamber and whether you can tell on video this thing has a sight slant backwards so that this is the highest point in the combustion chamber now as far as what you use to CC your heads um, I happen to work um, in a lab environment around the lab environment and so I have access to a pipette. Uh, this is a very large glass, long glass tube, and has a little tip on the end and a small bow. Um, this particular tube is a 50 cc pipette, so it holds 50 cc's of water. It actually holds a little bit more, but it's only graduated, little graduation marks on here. And those it's only graduated uh, into 50 cc's. I know these heads are going to be, or these combustion chambers, be greater than 50 cc's, so we'll have to refill it. You can do this with a a syringe, uh, any measuring device that will reasonably accurately measure cc's. Uh, the only thing I don't like about a syringe, you have to refill it many times, which if you have small error, you can have uh, that small error many times over. So I'm going to fill my tube with water, just straight tap water, and I'm going to fill it to something greater than 50 cc's, and then we'll drop the level down to 50 cc's and go from there. So forgive me while I make a mess over here. Luckily my garage floor doesn't really care. All right, so we are now full in excess of 50 cc's. Um, if we can see it, here's the water level right here. Um, we need to drop it down to 50 cc's so that we can get an accurate, an accurate uh, measurement. Now I happen to know that this this head, this uh, chamber is going to be greater than 50 cc, so we can pretty much put this in at a pretty high rate. 
that we're going to put it in the hole. And we're going to open up the valve and we're moving our, moving our water into the chamber. I'm not so sure how well you're going to be able to see the chamber fill. Um, but then again, I don't have a cameraman. I know Steven Spielberg here, so we're just doing what we can. So it's filling up. Now one thing, this thing, here's the zero mark. It will go below zero. So I have to be careful and stop it at zero. Uh, and then we'll do a refill on it. Uh, water level is up here. You can't see it yet. Let me turn it so you can once it comes down. So, yeah. Come on. So there's the water level. I think you can probably see it drop in there on the video. And we're going to take it down to zero and we're going to stop. Okay, so now we're very accurately at zero. Don't know if you can see it. There's a line right here where the water is, uh, is up in the head. Doesn't look like we're going to need a lot more water, and we shouldn't. Um, as I said, stock is 59 cc's. So what we're going to do is we're just going to fill this up to a mark that we can, uh, we can use to quantify. So I'm going to fill it here to the, it's at 40 cc's, but it's counting down. So that means really there's 10 cc's of water left between the 40 and the 50. I said zero earlier. This is actually a 50 mark. So we've got 10 cc's worth of water. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to fill it. We're going to fill the combustion chamber and uh, try not to overflow it as we do it. One thing I would suggest if you CC your head is that you spray them with some oil or cover them with some oil afterwards to prevent any flash rust. So we're very close. Now, there we go. Very close. Right there. Okay, you don't necessarily want to fill it to the top of the plug, so you just want to fill it to the bottom of the hole. And if we read this, we have put in nine more CCs. So basically, it's a 59 CC. Uh, head chamber and that's stock so basically what that says is that we didn't get rid of that extra water we didn't modify or they didn't modify the uh, combustion chamber size when they took off that very small amount of, of uh, metal when they when they decked the bottom of the head resurfaced the bottom of the head so put that up there hope it doesn't break so now for the fun part, basically you won't see this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna tip the head down, slide the plate away, and let the water uh, pretty much just hit the floor here. Let me move this real quick. I may try to catch some of it here in my in my water cup as we do it. No, that's not gonna work. It's just gonna hit the floor, so not a big deal. 50 cc's of water is not that much. So we slide the plate up. I'm sure you could hear that. That really, that was the water coming out of the head, I promise. So, if we can keep that plate for future use. At this point, I've cc two heads and they've given me identical results. So I'm not going to bother, or rather two chambers. They've given me identical results. So I'm not going to bother cc'ing all the chambers. Um, technically, should you? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, it's not a race motor. So, it's not, uh, we wouldn't do anything about it if one of them was slightly off. It's just for dimensionalizing the motor and understanding what our compression ratios are. We're going to talk more about it later, but one of my goals here is to determine the dynamic compression ratio. Um, compression ratio, that's the number you hear all the time, 9 to 1, 9.5 to 1. Uh, Kind of typical stock motors you're looking in the nine range generally uh, somewhere around there and if you go and look uh, you know it meets with the gas specifications that we have for for regular pump fuels as you go up on compression ratio your pump your fuel octane requirements go up to prevent pre-detonation things like that and uh, so in this case, what why do we care really 
what we're wanting to calculate is the dynamic compression ratio. The dynamic compression ratio is the actual amount of compression you get on the upstroke of your piston. So you would presume that that's from the bottom to the top. In fact, it's not. The actual compression ratio or the dynamic compression ratio, uh, compression can only begin once the intake valve is fully closed. The intake valve does not close instantaneously as you start your compression stroke. Uh, there's something on your timing car card called ICA, which is intake closure angle. So if your intake valve closes a certain angle, then as it's coming up, until it fully closes, you're actually um, not under full, you're not generating full compression. So your dynamic compression ratio is a relevant term, spray a little oil there, um, is a very important term uh, relative to fuel choice. Um, you actually want to make your fuel choice not off of your static compression ratio, but off of your dynamic compression ratio. Uh, that's what matters in that case. And so we'll see as we go. Uh, I'll let you know what, what numbers I come up with. But uh, if you run a 9 to 1 compression ratio, static compression ratio motor, you're not going to get that in dynamic because your intake valve is not closing um, instantaneously. Um, so you're going to get something 8, 8 and a half, something like that. And that ratio really matters when we start making a fuel choice later on this motor. So anyway, there you go. We've got that. Uh, CC'd out, so basically we're saying 59 cc's for all the combustion chambers, and uh, we're going to move on, take out these spark plugs, start installing the heads. All right, well we're ready to go on with these with these heads. Uh, let's talk a minute about the gaskets. A couple things. Uh, these are 39 thousandths gap gaskets. Uh, they're gap. Uh, they're that's their compressed thickness. Uh, I bought them specifically. Uh, because of that fact, uh, because we're trying to get the right amount of quench or squish. Um, and we want 40 thousandths between the top of the piston and the bottom of the head. We have 5 thousandths clearance here, 39 thousandths, 44 thousandths total. That's reasonable for squish. So we're happy with that. Um, the, uh, let's also just give a slight bump on uh, compression over a uh, stock uh, stock block one thing that strikes me when I put these on it there's a label up here that just say front I know it goes to the front and just for reference uh, you'll also note that there will be a square tab sticking out the front here at the bottom uh, which indicates that the gaskets installed um, the back one you'll see is is rounded off does not protrude it's intentional um, for inspection purposes see the gaskets there um, also, uh, one thing you'll note is that these holes, um, these holes in the block are fairly small, or in the gasket rather, are fairly small. If we actually lift the gasket back off, which is no fun, it can be done. If we lift the gasket back off, but the holes that they're covering uh, are these rather large water jacket ports. So why in the world are these holes small and these holes large? And the answer is, I don't know, but I looked uh, up gaskets for this motor, and oh, come on. I looked up gaskets for this motor, and they all give you the same. Uh, they all have these these limited uh, hole sizes on these water jacket ports. So I can assume flow's balanced. They've got them sized, uh, hopefully to balance the flow. You'll note that there are dowels here. There's a dowel here. These are new dowels. Uh, I took off the old dowels previously before I sent it off to be machined. Some were in the head, some were in the, in the block, but uh, I took them off and moved on. And got a new set of dowels, four dowels between both sides. No big deal. Um, one thing to note, these five bolts go into a sealed uh, bolt hole in the block. These five bolts go into the water jacket. Must seal these five bottom bolts. Uh, or you will have water leaks in that you don't want. So we'll add RTV sealant to those when we install them. Also, we're using a stud kit. It's an ARP head stud kit. And we're not doing it so that we can take the head off and on and the studs stay in place. We're doing it so that as we apply torque, the torque being uh, applied to the threads is not a rotational torque. As you rotate this, the nut that's on this thing, it's not going to 
rotate within the block. Therefore, you have less thread wear on torquing. And so if you do put heads off and on this block, you will have basically much longer lifetime. Now, if you want these to stay permanently in the block, you could have a small amount of Loctite right before install uh, to try to hold them in. My problem is every time I take a head off this motor, I'm going to reseal these with RTV anyway. So I'm not worried about uh, the studs necessarily staying in the block whenever I do the change out. Now the install. Install on the top ones, fairly easy. Go go to tight, you know, go to hand tight, back them off an eighth or so. Uh, you want the threads, uh, the thread to thread meeting in the block to carry the torque. You don't want them bottomed out necessarily in the bottom of the block. These will actually go in further than you want them to. And so we'll wait and set those depths once we actually uh, get the uh, get the head installed. We're going to go ahead now and we're going to put in these bottom these bottom ARP studs with RTV. And as soon as we start this, we're going to start the clock. We don't want our RTV to set up while we're messing around. We want our RTV to still be fluid and moving. And uh, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, get my washers and my nuts ready for install Ugh. if I can get the package open so that we have those available to us also we will install um, ARP torque lubricant on the bolts once the head's in place and uh, once the head's in place we'll do that uh, after we set the bottom studs and RTV in the bottom studs so here we go. It's time for a head. This is always fun. I don't know about you, but I'm getting old and these things are heavy <coughs> and awkward. So, let's see if we can do this thing right. Okay, I've got the intake side up. Let's set it down on this first bolt. Oh. Nobody said it was easy. All right, so we're sitting. We're sitting on the gasket. I'm comfortable. Both surfaces look good. You can see our our ARP studs here, and then down below is where the uh, the bottom studs are that go into the into the jacket. So we're going to just start uh, because we don't want to get in a hurry. Um, once we put the RTV on, we're going to be in a bit no, it's that big big hurry, but we're going to be in a little bit more of a hurry to get everything set. So we're gonna go ahead and get these top ones started and get the assembly lube on them. Because of their location, <laughs> there's only one good way and that's by hand. So we're just gonna take some assembly lube, I mean some uh, torque lubricant, and apply it to the bolts. It's not as easy as if they're out of the heads, but we can make it work. You also want some Enough that when you slide your washer and nut down on there, some of it will go under the washer uh, just to help relieve any stress or strain there. Now the torquing requirements, we have a ARP uh, torque specs. Remember that if you go with another fastener besides a stock fastener or a fastener that's intended to function as stock, uh, in this case ARP, look for their Look for their torque procedures. Um, they might well be the same uh, as your stock torque procedures. Um, they might just as well be different. And so you want to make sure that you're applying the correct procedure for the fastener that you're using. So we're going to take five washers, slip them on here. And then we'll take five nuts, put on there as well. And the nuts are the same size for both the top and the bottom studs, even though they are studs are slightly different. And we're going to just keep building the top end until I make some decisions about the bottom end. I'll tell you what my inclination is right now. Uh, my inclination right now is to go get a stock oil pump for this motor and replace that melting high volume. Get a melting stock and uh, 
use it. We will see what we're going to do. All right, so having put those in, here's your bottom studs. Look closely, you have two different, you have a coarse thread and you have a finer thread, a fine thread here at the top. So uh, just for comparative purposes here, this is the bottom and this one is the top. So you can see they're quite, quite different sized. Um, we're just going to test fit this thing right now and see how this is going to work out. I'm uh, sorry you can't see that bolt very well, can you? Yeah, I did uh, tap all these holes back when the block was green before we had it machined. <coughs> so they should go well. We're going to start with some RTV. And your favorite high temperature RTV is fine with me. But I'm certainly going to use my favorite high temperature RTV. Why not? So we're going to smear it around on here really good. To me, a uh, water jacket leak on these bolts would just not be any fun at all. Uh, so I'm going to get a little liberal and, uh, and screw them in there. So we're going to do that on all five of them. And again, on the course set it in. Don't put it on the wrong end. Then you're going to end up RTV and your head stud bolt on there. And that's not what you want to do. <coughs> They're nice and lined up which is good. They're hitting as soon as we put them in there. So I'll come back to you in a few minutes. Let me get this done. Well, we're back to it. All the, uh, all the studs and all the nuts and washers have been installed. We have here a, uh, torque procedure, uh, torque order, uh, as reference. And, uh, we're going to, uh, just begin by torquing that the, the ARP torques uh, torque specs for this particular uh, these bolts are 80 pounds ultimate torque they want you to take it there in three uh, nice easy steps so we're going to start out at 27 foot pounds and we're going to work our way up um, and we're going to follow the torque pattern so let me get a ratchet on my torque wrench I mean a socket on my torque wrench it'll make life easier did get a, uh, a deep socket only because we've got these studs sticking up a little bit. I don't want to run into interferences. So this is number one. It's the center top, 27 foot pounds. And then number two, which is immediately one immediately below it. Let me get proper orientation here. There we go. There's 27 there. And then number three. Below it's number four. And one of the reasons we're wanting to do this, I want to get these heads on, particularly one of them at least. I want to confirm my um, push rod sizing. In order to do that, you get the head on, heads on. And uh, yeah, it's not too bad of a process putting the heads on. Fairly simple. Just a little different for me this time because it's using this ARP head stud kit. Okay, so we've got them all. I'm going to walk around them again. Make sure they're all at 27 foot pounds. And it helps me memorize the pattern, which. I will know well by the time I'm done. Okay, so we're all at 27 foot pounds. And we're going to double that. And we're going to go to 54 foot pounds. Last step we'll take will be to 80. All right. Hopefully we're getting good gas compression and ultimately 
good ceiling. Be careful putting your hand like I was doing there. Make sure if you're going to do it, you just have it on the head of the wrench and not here on this joint. Okay, 57 foot-pounds all the way around, and we're going to go to 80. Eighty foot-pounds. It's going to get serious now. Okay, change the angle of attack on that one. I'm such a lightweight. All right, almost done. Can we say a prayer? Okay, now it's up to the prayer. All you can do about that. All right, heads on. We'll do it again on the other side. And uh, then we can start worrying about rockers and push rods. Talk to you later.